All right, so this video is aimed at undergrads. I thought to myself, if I was an undergrad and I knew I wanted to go into graduate medicine after university, what would I do now so that I could prepare myself as best as I could and then get in straight away when I did go and apply. So if that is you, then this video will be perfect for your preparation. But if that's not you and you are just someone considering going into graduate medicine, then maybe there's some useful stuff in this video. I don't know. You have to watch all 10 minutes of it and find out and see for yourself. All right, what are you telling me? My name is Marius Hugh and I'm a third year graduate medical student at Southampton University. I've just finished up my psychiatric rotation. I'm now going on to specialties, which is ophthalmology, neurology, head and neck, and what's the last one? Dermatology, dermatology. So keep an eye out for my psychiatry vlog. It's gonna be the weirdest one yet. Let me tell you that for free. Anyway, back to the video. So in this video, I thought of four tips, four things that if I was an undergrad, I would want someone to tell me, do these things now, and that's gonna help you when you do come to apply to graduate medicine. So tip number one is to get hours of work experience in, and also get certificates for those goddamn hours of work experience. So I think this is one of the best things you can do as an undergraduate for your preparation in going into graduate medicine and there's three reasons I think that's the case. So firstly, for some graduate medical schools, you need to have proof that you've done a certain number of hours of work experience so that they'll even look at the rest of your application. So these schools are places like Warwick, which I think is the most you know anal about this, basically, uh, but also Nottingham Graduate Medical School. And arguably, actually, those are the easiest ones to get into. I think the competition ratios for those ones, um, you stand the best chance of getting in. Also, Nottingham, you can have a 2-2 to apply there. You know, Warwick, you can have any degree. They let in like almost 200 people. So my impression of those medical schools is that you know, you've got a pretty good chance of getting in there. You don't need a ludicrous score in the in the UK CAT or anything like that. So it's basically, it's worth trying to get your work experience in so that you can apply to these graduate medical schools and hopefully get a place. So that's the first thing. Getting work experience literally opens up schools that you can apply for. So it gives you, it gives you more options. The second thing is that it literally gives you stuff to talk about during your interviews. And I don't mean just those interviews for Warwick and Nottingham. Literally for all my medical school interviews, I was talking about my work experience. You know, things that happened on the ward, patients that I've met and reflected upon, experiences I had giving hands-on care to people, to humans, which is what the job entails that you're signing up for. So if you can get a decent amount of like hands-on work experience, as well as shadowing experience, and show that you've reflected on it, it can set you apart from other candidates. You know, if you've had interesting experiences on the ward and you can tell them a story about those experiences and what you've learned from them, that's definitely gonna set you apart and make your application more memorable compared to other people that are also applying but haven't got those same experiences. It makes you unique, you know what I'm trying to say. It's a good thing to do. And it's definitely a good thing to do during your, during your undergrad. The third thing about getting this work experience during your undergraduate degree that I think is probably a good thing is that you can meet doctors, you can talk to them about the lifestyle, about the journey, you know, what they earn, etc., and actually see if the realities of becoming a doctor are actually something that you're interested in. A lot of people, I think, glorify the role of a doctor. People think that you're in there every day from day one, just saving lives and just generally being a hero. But the reality is, to be honest, you're a sideman for most of your career especially for the first like six, seven years. As a medical student, I'm in my fourth year and I'm still a sideman. Look, God knows I'm a sideman. I'm, I'm turning up to placement and just like standing at the back of the corridor. No, no one even knows I'm supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? I've just got, I'm hustling for those opportunities. So yeah, two and a half years into my medical career, I'm still a sideman. I'm sure I'm gonna still be a spare part as a junior doctor. And you only kind of get into that true life-saving role Potentially when you're on call or, or like on night shifts when you're the only doctor in, in the building But down the line you start to get more responsibility So yeah getting work experience is a good idea because it can give you an appreciation of what the job is actually like If doing medicine is something that you've thought of and you think you might be interested in then the best thing to do Is just get a load of work experience and see if you like it because it's a big commitment So you may as well go in with your eyes open um, and not drop out like a bunch of my colleagues did. So I just wanna hammer home the practicalities of this work experience malarkey. So for Warwick, you need 20 hours of shadowing experience and then you need 50 hours of hands-on care experience, right? 
So shadowing you can easily get. I got my shadowing experience during my undergrad and the way I got that was I reached out to the Durham University Rugby um, sports medic who happened to be an A&E consultant at North Tees Hospital. I just went to chat to him on the side of the pitch saying, yo, what are you telling me boss man? I'm considering doing graduate medicine. Can I just come and shadow you for a couple of days? And yeah, there was a little bit of a process to it, but a few weeks later, um, I just went in and shadowed him. So that actually made up my shadowing experience already. You know, I wasn't aware of this 50 hours of hands-on care rule, so I thought, you know, I'll get some more shadowing experience. The other way I got shadowing experience was I approached my immunology professor who had links to people, um, clinical immunologists who worked, uh, I think, at Newcastle Hospital this time. Um, What's it called? The Royal... I can't even remember. I made a video about it, but I can't even remember the name. Um, the Royal Victoria, isn't it? Yeah, the Royal Victoria. Um, so yeah, I went over there for a couple of days and just shadowed this immunologist. It was quite dry, but some of the conditions very interesting. Um, it was all clinic based. And after I finished my university degree, I applied for a, a job as a bank healthcare assistant at a psychiatric hospital. So basically you're a healthcare assistant but you're actually on this thing called the bank which is a group of reserve healthcare assistants that they um, advertise jobs to to plug holes uh, and to make sure that wards are fully staffed in the absence of full-time staff. So tip number two also relates to your work experience. So my advice before you go into these days of work experience that you'll have booked is to make a list of the non-academic criteria that each university wants you to fulfill. So these are things like communication, resilience, teamwork, uh, leadership skills, things like that. And these are things that every single medical school is likely to probably ask you and they're things that they want to see in their prospective candidates because they feel like those characteristics are what someone needs to be a good doctor. So if you have a list of those non-academic criteria, then you're going into your days of work experience and when things happen, you can reframe them so they actually give you a story about, for example, a time when you showed leadership qualities, you know, you were on the ward and something happened and you showed initiative and helped out in a certain way. I don't know what the story would be. But yeah, if you're mindful of these characteristics that they're looking for in their candidates before you go into your work experience days, then I think it'll be easier to reframe the experience into a neat little story that's gonna give you good points on your interview when they definitely ask you these kind of questions. And so you can find these criteria on lots of different medical school websites. Um, hopefully I'll give you an example somewhere there, a little screen recording or something. So tip number three is work on dealing with pressure as an undergraduate. I think this is one of those skills that you can take forward into your life and it's one of the most useful things I actually did as an undergrad. My brother bought me this book. Um, actually, let me just get it, one sec. My brother basically bought me this book, it's called The Inner Game of Tennis. I think the tips on dealing with pressure from this book are really, really useful. They're something I fall back on a lot when, for example, I have an interview or if I have an assessment. Like literally just before I had an online assessment for my psychiatry um, and I was using things that I picked up from this book. So having a good foundation and an ability to deal with pressure I think is really useful, especially going into your medical school interviews. They're quite high pressure environments. If you're feeling tight on the day, or if you're nervous and you let that affect your performance, then you're gonna leave those interviews with regret. You're gonna be thinking, why, why oh why didn't I read that goddamn book? That weird book about tennis, but that book that Marius Yu recommended, and I watched that weird video that he made in one random corner of YouTube. You know, why didn't I start building those foundations um, and start forming those mental structures that are gonna enable me to deal with pressure. That's definitely something you can be getting on with as an undergraduate. Work on dealing with pressure. That's gonna benefit you when you do come to your medical school interviews and beyond. So tip number four is don't burn out. So even if you know you want to do graduate medicine, there is no honor in just solely in your spare time doing preparation for this process. And actually, to be honest, it might be to your detriment. Yeah, you know, I know for example, my medical school, Southampton University, they like well-rounded candidates in their undergraduates and in their graduates. They like people that have other interests and that have developed their hobbies. I don't think they're super keen on, you know, the super nerd type, type people. Um, like for example, I imagine Imperial medics are. The fact that I had other interests, you know, I was playing rugby to a high level. But yeah, I, I hammed up my unique selling point in that way. Obviously, a lot of people 
on my course have different interests and things that they're you know unbelievably good at there's some excellent like musicians sportsmen entrepreneurs all sorts of all sorts of stuff but yeah speaking for Southampton they really like their candidates to be well-rounded so one of the best things you can do is to not burn out and not put too much emphasis into your preparation during undergraduate you know go out develop your hobbies and that's going to put you in a good position weirdly that's going to put you in a good position for getting into graduate medicine obviously alongside all the other things I've talked about so yeah that's basically it so don't hustle too hard but it's definitely beneficial if you're an undergrad and you're thinking of doing graduate medicine in the future. It's definitely beneficial to get some work experience in, read some books to try and work out how to deal with uh, pressure. Unless you're obviously already very good at that, which, well, personally, I was dead at that. And now I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably the best. Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, anyway, that's it. So good luck for your endeavors in the future. Good luck for your graduate entry medicine application if it's coming up or if you're gonna do that next year or whatever. Yeah, follow me on Instagram, ping me a message if you want any advice or whatever. I'm not reading personal statements though. Don't send me your personal statements. Wow. Um, yeah, that's a bit too much. I've got too much work on for that. Well, much. That's too much, too much to do out here. But yes, good luck if you're applying for graduate entry medicine in the coming years or months. Cheers.